Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a cool way how you can make some glitches in Ableton two different ways and I'll show you how to build out the rack and what you can use it for. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, the rack that I'm going to be recreating is going to be a rack that's in a pack in my Patreon. So if you want to support me, hop over to the Patreon, $5 a month. So far, you're getting a free project file from one of the streams, as well as five audio effect racks with an Ableton, all made with stock effects. I'm on Ableton 11, so if you haven't upgraded to 12, that's going to work perfectly for you, but just as a little side note in there. We also have a Discord now. I'll link that in the description below. We're offering free stuff in there, and some of the members in that Discord have also sent out some samples, so we have like a sample sharing section in that server where you can kind of share things, download things, use them in your projects, etc. So hopefully that's of interest to you. Hopefully we can keep that community growing. And again, if you want to support me, you can hop on that Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and just play a sound or we can actually just uh, grab some type of uh, serum so let's go ahead and just do this and let's just draw a note let's stretch it out and let's just do some super light sound design so I'm gonna hop into serum here and we can just do even just like a preset just to uh, demonstrate what this can do so like that is perfect a little low all right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten this real quick so we can see what the wave is looking like. So obviously it's just a small little sine wave here or um, you know just a pluck um, kind of going downwards. Now, if we go ahead and just pop the actual audio effect rack that's gonna come in that pack, it's gonna kick it from two. So you get some cool effects from it. So I'm gonna show you how to recreate a similar version today. So if we go ahead and we can just start with some audio effects. So if we want some type of panning, we want some type of different um, kind of characteristics at play, what we can do is we can grab like a chorus and this can build or be the start of our rack. We could do something like that just to add a little bit more characteristic. We can also do something like a phaser and flanger. I like using the doubler. add some like stereo width to it. And then we can add something like a tonal plugin. So maybe a resonator. This is an E. Maybe bring the decay down. Maybe we want to bring the pitch down uh, an octave. Up an octave for a third. Maybe we even do 24 for the last. We could do something like that. And then where this kind of starts to get fun is you start adding OTTs. So I don't know if this is really a known thing. It's something that I kind of came across and uh, thought it would be cool. So you get one OTT. Let's add a saturator here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to start duplicating this OTT. So here's what five sounds like. If we were to duplicate that, let's go ahead and bring our output of our saturator down. Here's 10. And then if we duplicate that, Start to get a little bit of like a texture at the end. Duplicate that one more time. And that's when you start to get some cool effects. So let's go ahead and dial in that first OTT a little bit more. We don't really need all of that low end in here. And let's just duplicate that one a bunch of times. And then you get something like this. Maybe a couple more. And then if we freeze it, I'll go ahead and flatten that one. We have our original sound. And we have our process sound with some glitches in there. And so you could do, um, you know, you could do a little like loop here and it could have like a glitch right here in the middle. Or you could even go backwards and you could have it kind of like um, alter between parts of the glitch. Obviously a pretty simple idea, but I do do this a lot in my music. So if you listen to my music, you can hear kind of what's going on. But what you can do, and the second trick is, even if this isn't a glitch, what you could do is, if you mess with the grain size and the flex and the texture, what you can do is you can go to envelopes, you can do clip, you can do transposition, you can uh, bring up your draw mode, and then you could draw something like this to get some cool effects. If you want it to be up and then down. Obviously a little too much there. So you get some cool effects like that. You could even change your grid size, maybe to medium, and then you could draw um, smaller or bigger curves like this. And you have some effect like that too. So the texture effect can work in any circumstance with any sound, and you can use that glitch rack with a bunch of different sounds to get some cool effects like this, where it has some cool artifacting at the end that you can use. So 
just mess with how many OTTs you use, the effects that come before it, and you can get some pretty cool results by doing so. So hopefully this was able to give you some ideas on maybe how to fill in some space between some bases or something for your drop. But with all this being said, thank you for watching the video, and we'll see you again in the next one.